Good evening, everybody, and welcome. Nos wait da baub a croesel canis yawn in hoidba a dawal ni. Man brav ka croesawi pobolo draws kemri, ethi hunt hevid, kavlini gi dioch du, and bethi gwiddled and a colleague eleni, a kad nabod, a farwellior mavarwisi gudani, a matro ola heno, a mavarwisi vodi gwaith your more galed, and a sode kavnod and a colleague. And so we're extending a very warm welcome this evening to students and staff, our families, our churches, and all friends of the college, as we gather tonight to thank God for what has happened this year in college and to send our leaving students out with our love and our blessing. It's especially warm welcome, Kroiswar Benny Gyaun, by Hedig Jenny Entrican. Jenny is preaching for us this evening. She's recorded the sermon beforehand. I'm not sure whether she'll actually be able to make it in person, but whether she does or not, we really look forward to Jenny's message. So as I said, it's lovely to see so many of you here. We're grateful for the technology which made this possible but we also acknowledge that we're very dependent on the technology. So we hope that you'll forgive us if there are a few hitches and also to try to give everybody the best possible experience. We will be muting your microphones during this service. So please don't be offended. It's nothing personal. A hevid, Danin Mindy recorded your oidva. The service will be recorded, is being recorded as I speak. If you don't wish to appear in the recording, then all you need to do is turn your video off. You'll still be able to see and hear everything, but you won't appear in the final recording. A deal. So I now leave you in the capable hands of our college chaplain, the Reverend Dr. Craig Gardner, who's going to be leading us in worship this evening. Good evening, everyone. And uh, may I extend my welcome too. Um, and just to um, give you a taster of where we're going to end up. Some of you will have seen um, community attempts to uh, join together in song and praise, uh, and we're going to have our own version of that right at the end. Uh, so please bear with us to the end and you'll see uh, our, our students uh, singing together a great hymn of praise. But before we get to that point, let's come together and you may wish to join with me in the language of your choice as we bring our hearts and minds before God. This is the place, though we may feel dislocated and isolated in life, God meets us here to change our minds, to change our lives, to change our ways. This is the time Though we may feel paused and interrupted in our life, God meets us now to change our minds, to change our lives, to change our ways. To hear good news in unexpected places, to be good news in unprecedented times, the God of promise is present with us now, filling us with hope joy and longing for the future. This is the place, as are all places. This is the time, as are all times, when heaven touches earth, blessing those who come to seek the kingdom. Here and now, let us praise God. And we're going to do that with a song that will be, will be led uh, by Steve Locke, uh, one of our students, but also just to make you aware that later on in the service, we are going to offer our prayers of concern to God. And one of the ways in which we will do that, will be trying to read through some prayers, things that are people, that are places, that are burdens on your heart, that may, you may wish to write in the chat, and I will try and uh, gather those together in a prayer later on in the service. So please do take the opportunity to do that as we now come and worship and do sing along in your muted capacity uh, as we are led in a great song, Praise Him, You Heavens and All That's Above.
Tau da chaniad o ezea penod pim deg tri. What you got wrong? Credi neges glowoni. I saw in the world in Gramesar Argloith. Where did the devion fly in? Doy then the moi na brigin. Breathe in me. Nine nine zero. Or han e on doy the dim ne then ni adrichar no dim moi the ne uneid an arbeni go then ni adol. Cafodd ei ddirmygu a'i wrthod gan bobl, yn ddyn wnaeth i ofedd yn gyfarwydd a phoen. Roedd pobl yn troi ei wynebau i ffwrdd oedd ei wrtho. Cafodd ei ddirmygu a wneitho ni mwy werthau rogi. Ac eto, cymerodd ein salwch ni arno ei hun a di ofedd ein poenau ni yn ein lle. Roedd e'n un meddwl ein bod ei fod yn cael ei gosbi a'i giro a'i gam drin gan ddiw. To, cafodd ei anafu, a mewn bod ni wedi gwrthrybela, cafodd ei sathru, a mewn bod ni ar fai. Cafodd ei gosbi i wneud pethau niawn i ni, ac am iddo fe gael ei giro, cawsom ni ei ni a chai. Dyn ni i gyd wedi crwydro fel defed, pob un wedi mynd ei ffordd ei hun, ond mae'r arglwydd wedi rhoi ein pechod ni i gyd arno fe. Cafodd ei gan drin a'i boenidio, wnaeth e ddweud dim, fel oen yn cael ei arwain i'r llafdi, yn union fel mae dafad yn dawel pa mae'n cael ei chneifio, wnaeth e wneud dim. Cafodd ei gymryd i ffwrdd heb achos llys teg, a ffwy oedd yn malio beth oedd yn digwydd iddo. Cafodd ei dorri i ffwrdd o dir y byw a'i daro, am fod fy mhobol i wedi gwrthrybela. Y bwriad oedd ei gladdu gyda thrasyddwyr, ond cafodd fe ddyn cyfoethog. Roedd wedi gweithredu yn ddidrais a ddim wedi twyllo neb. Ac eto, yr arglwydd wnaeth benderfynu ei gleisio ac achosu i ddoddi oedd. Wrth rhoi ei hun yn offrwm dros bechod, pan yn gweld ei blant ac yn cael byw yn hir, bydd yn cyflawni bwriadau'r arglwydd. Ar ôl dioddef i gyd bydd yn gweld beth wnaeth a bydd yn gwbl fodlon. Bydd fy'n was cyfiawn yn gwneud llawer o bobl yn gyfiawn ac yn cario baich eu beiau ar ei ysgwyddau. Felly, y dyrfa yna fydd eu siar ef a bydd yr hynny'r ysbael gyda'r hai cryfion am ei fod wedi rhoi ei hun i farw a'i gyfri'n un o'r gwrthre lefelwyr, cymerodd bechodau lawer o bobl ar noi hun, ac ymyrryd ar han gwrthre lefelwyr. Bendithia diw y darllen y gwrando ar diall. Amen. We're going to come on to a prayer of confession, um, first in Welsh and then in English. Ein tad, rydyn ni'n gwybod fod yr holl byd yn dangos dy'r gromiant. Roi ti wedi creu popeth, Roi ti'n gwybod popeth, a roi ti'n nabod popeth. Ti greodd bob rhan ohonom, a'n llunio yng ngroth ei mamau. Ti a greodd ni i ddod ag y goniant i dy enw er ein bod ni'n meddu yn aml. Helpa ni i adael y pychodau sy'n ein bagu mor rhoedd a rhedeg y ras sy'n o'r blaen. Di aloda Heavenly Father. Thank you that the whole earth reflects your glory. You have created all things. You see all things. You know all things. You knit us together in our mother's wombs. Nothing is hidden from you. You have created us to bring glory to your name, but we recognize that we have fallen short of your glory and all you have called us to do. Help us to let go of the sin that so easily entangles and help us to run the race you have called us to live. Mae'n amser tawel, gadwch i ni gyfaddef ein pechodi i'n tad. In a moment of quiet, let's call to mind our sins and lay them at the feet of our living Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. 
We thank you, Lord, for your mercy. In Jesus' name. Amen. Good evening, everybody. It's uh, a real pleasure to see you this evening. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, I know there are many churches represented, there are many uh, families represented, and indeed there are many students represented and simply friends of the college, and we are so grateful to you for joining us for this uh, celebratory occasion, but of course tinged with some sadness that we have good friends who will be leaving us, but also that we can't do this in person. But let me begin with the most important news. Um, the uh, inaugural uh, winners of the pastoral group quiz last night, following rounds on Wales and on music and on the Bible and on films, all of them fiendishly designed to produce a Christian puzzle. The winners were Rose's pastoral group, hooray! And so we congratulate Deb and Sean and Emmy and Betty Wynn and of course Rosa. And uh, I'm sorry that this is as much of a prize as you're going to get, but nevertheless, you have the acknowledgement of the general public gathered here and all that you achieved last night. But it was great fun. So thank you very much and an excellent way to end the year. When Rosa and I took on the co principalship of the college last summer, little did we know what was in store and perhaps that was just as well uh, but we're so proud of the way that staff and students have risen to the challenge and found ways to continue the good work of god and the good work of the college in this time we've been joined this year by uh, by Stephen Roberts as our new tutor in practical theology and mission and Anna Smith as librarian and they have both done such a brilliant job for which we are so grateful. Indeed Rosa and I say a huge thank you to all of the staff team to Craig and to Stephen and to Martin and to Anita and to Anna and to John and to Graham for their outstanding work but also for their friendship over this year. And we would ask you to pray, please, for the role of college manager, which we will be advertising shortly as Martin prepares to retire in the next year. We particularly want to thank Helen Painter, who has taught the Hebrew Bible for us um, for a number of years now and who is finishing with us in order to work full time for Bristol Baptist College from August. Helen, we are so grateful to you for all that you've done and we congratulate Bristol on making such a wonderful appointment. But I also want to take the opportunity to express my personal thanks to Rosa, who has come into this role as if she's been doing it for years with extraordinary faith and vision and energy and patience with me. It has been an absolute privilege to work alongside you, Rosa, and I thank you that we get to do this together. But enough about the staff, we want to hear about the students who are the reason the college exists. And Sarah have Tim and Tim have been our superb senior students this year, and they're going to introduce the year as they have seen it. Excellent, thank you very much, Ed. Um, it's worth noting because a few people have picked up on it, I am wearing a shirt. Um, but I am wearing shorts, which I think makes up for it. Um, and we wouldn't have been able to do this, Ed, if we had been meeting in person. So I'm quite grateful for the Zoom opportunity. Um, as Ed said, uh, Sarah and myself have been uh, senior students this year. Uh, I think we should start by being honest. We really took the role because uh, no one else would do it. Um, Laura had done it superbly the year before, and we felt it was a good chance uh, to get involved. But we have loved representing the student body. Uh, one of the privileges I guess you'd say is that we've got to journey so closely with Ed and Rosa in their first year as co-principals. Um, they've taken a huge amount of time to listen to us, to support us um, and we really feel like it was uh, a very unique position for, for Sarah and I to come in at this time and be a part of it. They've been amazing in their responses to the pastoral needs of uh, the students um, and obviously with everything else that's kind of gone on, they've been superb. So we haven't got long, Craig has told us. Um, so we just thought that we would just throw out some of our highlights from the year. Um, when you think about Bible college, you might think about it being about academic things and 
you know, deep biblical teaching and we get all that and it's great and the practical skills. But one of the added bonuses is this sense of community spirit that is built. Um, we've had the opportunity to make friends and colleagues that I know will be with us for lifelong ministry. Because as many of you are pastors, know that only a pastor can really understand what a pastor is going through. Um, so, you know, we've really valued that. And, and a big part of that is the trips to Trevecca that we've had in September and January. It just gives us the opportunity to build on the friendships that we've already had, but also for, for the new students to, to start forming bonds with the rest of, of the students. And that's done through through games and talking over a, an awful lot of food, um, which is great, and of course in lectures. Um, but it's been, we've really valued those times in Trebekah. Another one of the highlights of the year for many of the students has been the opportunity for us to reclaim the chapel space. Um, something that I know a lot of previous students that we've spoken to have really valued and um, going back into that space and using it for a diverse collection of worship has been amazing and uh, one of my personal highlights and I know others have really appreciated it is um, being able on a Saturday morning to bring a preacher in uh, who delivers a superb message and then is put into the hot seat and quiz questioned and quizzed by the students about how they prepared um, why they used the message they used um, and we've really appreciated that so a huge thank you to all those who are on this call who have been a part of uh, creating that for us um, and well done for surviving it. So the year was going as planned and then Corona hit and lockdown hit and just like everybody else in the country the college had to make some changes and Tim and I agree that you know they were they did an amazing job of very quickly responding to the needs you know, we were, were students that were in the middle of writing a lot of essays. We had responsibilities in our own churches, pastoral care to give, and the college, as Tim said at the beginning, put our needs first, and we are very grateful for that. And we are not being paid to say this tonight either. We genuinely do feel it. Um, and in a time when social distance was brought in, actually the college and the tutors enabled us to, to come together even more by providing daily prayer meetings, weekly pastoral groups, and of course the monthly online learning. And I know that for a number of students, the input from the college community has been an amazing support in this time of isolation. So I think, you know, as a college, you should pat yourselves on the back for, for how you've dealt with um, this this period in our lives so thank you so we just wanted to close by saying on behalf of all of the student body a huge thank you to the staff uh, to the guest contributors who have come in for the guidance the encouragement um, in what will surely be a year that none of us will quickly forget so a huge thank you to all of you who have played such an important part in uh, this year for all of us that's wonderful thank you very much indeed and uh, we wanted to take the opportunity to just hear some stories of what amazing things God has been doing through the students, uh, especially in recent times. And first of all, John Brewer and then Merv Rigg are going to share what God has been doing through them. But frankly, the stories that we're about to hear, which are, are wonderful, could be multiplied many, many times. So thanks be to God for our students and for the way in which they're being used of God. Good evening. Uh, lockdown has brought many challenges to Christians and churches around the world. Uh, for me personally, in a rural chapel in Pembrokeshire, uh, lockdown brought opportunities as well as obstacles. Um, briefly, about a year before lockdown, I brought a vision to my placement church at Sandy Hill Chapel in Pembrokeshire. And a part of that vision was a picture of concentric circles coming out of the chapel across the land. Now, the church secretary, Ruth, picked up on it and she says it reminded her of sound waves and why don't you do a podcast? I thought that's a really good idea, but I'm a little bit too busy. Well, fast forward a year, I'm a second year student at the South Wales Baptist College and we've had some great visits and teaching, 
A highlight was Dominic Jewell from BBC Radio about broadcasting. And we've been learning about contemporary ministry preaching even in a digital age. And then COVID-19 breaks out across the world. So the question we had at Sandy Hill was, how can we be and do church during lockdown? What came to mind was those sound waves coming out of the chapel. We should do that podcast, I thought, and we did. So we started this radio style show, um, Godcast, on a platform called Anchor FM. But there's one problem. We couldn't play worship music legally. So I took this to the Lord and prayed and really asking him for another platform and, you know, asking him, we really need to get on the radio. So I contacted the new local community radio station in Haverford West called Pure West Radio. I didn't hear anything for a while, but kept persevering. So about a month later, the station manager phones me up. And as I sent a link to our podcast, he had been listening to it. And he said it was very good. And there is possibility of having a Sunday morning show on Pure West Radio in two weeks. Two weeks? Two weeks time? Well, he went through the format and the technical details and he would give me 50 minutes at eight o'clock in the morning around three advert breaks. I could play worship music, yes. I could ask local ministers to give a thought for Sunday every week, yes. And he turns to me and says, John, I like your vision. So during lockdown, their listening figures in our tiny county of Pembrokeshire had grown to 36,000 listeners a week. Plus podcast. Glory to God. Oh man, thank you very much, John. It's amazing. And anybody who is here could tune in on Sunday and uh, raise the praise with you. So, um, what are going to be the highlights this week, John? Um, we've got Mark Stevens. Uh, he used to be the Neighbours years ago. Um, next week we've got Graham Kendrick interview. So you see, uh, these are the the heroes of the Christian world and Neighbours. So um, it's worth love tuning your in. Neighbor. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, very good. <laughs> Merv, where are you? I'm here. Can you see me? Wow, we can. <laughs> This is what it's like to be a hospital chaplain now. So Craig asked me to share just a couple of words about this. Um, so hi, my name is Mervyn uh, and I'm a volunteer chaplain at the Royal Gwent Hospitals. Uh, and this is, what it this is what it's like now to be a hospital chaplain. Uh, and as you probably know, it's been a critical time for the NHS. Uh, and I'd just like to highlight three main areas of change within the NHS chaplaincy during the lockdown. Uh, number one, um, changing patient support. So services in the chapel have been canceled. Uh, bedside communions have changed. We have to use this PPE that you can see here. And for communion wine, we have to use disposable medicine cups now instead of um, the chalice. During lockdown, chaplains have been performing a liaison role between patients and the outside world because people can't get, people can't get into the hospital. Number two, uh, increasing staff support. While the chapel is closed for services, there's been more staff visiting the chapel for private prayers. And we've had staff visit for what we call uh, chill out in the chapel, uh, where we have a space for people to relax in massage chairs and chill out from all the stress and the anxiety from the wards. Uh, sadly, with in the intensive care unit, which is already on the front line, um, has had a team member take their own life, which has obviously been quite traumatic for the hospital. Uh, and, and the chaplaincy will be taking a memorial service in the hospital uh, in a couple of weeks time. And uh, number three, we've had a donation distribution shop. The chaplaincy has taken responsibility for the enormous influx of donations for the hospital. The hospital shop has been taken over and become a distribution center for all the donations of food, drink, clothes, toiletries, and other items. So in short, the chaplains have had to step up to the front line and stand shoulder to shoulder with the weary medical staff. In Genesis chapter 50, Joseph was right when he said, what was intended to harm us, God has used for good. And would really appreciate your prayers at this time. And please contact us if you know anyone that's in hospital at this time. Thank you. 
Thank you very much indeed, Merv. And we do pray for you and for all those who are on the front line. We're, we're grateful to God for you. We really are. Now, as you will hopefully have seen in the chat, if you've got it open, and uh, if you haven't, you can see it just um, on probably at the bottom of your screen there, if you click on chat, um, it's possible to click on uh, a link that says valedictory newsletter 2020.pdf and you can download more stories of uh, what students have been up to and that will be uh, really worth reading. It, I've been reading it this afternoon and just thought wow this is good stuff so uh, please do make the most of that we'll also make it available in other ways too. Um, just a couple more thanks uh, as we come to the end of this section. One would be to thank our colleagues at St. Padan's uh, Institute in Llandaff and at Cardiff University this year. And our apologies to them uh, when we've made it harder for them, but it's been great to work with them as well. And I know that Professor James Hegarty, the head of the School of History, Archaeology and Religion, would have loved to be here, but he's actually uh, got something else on tonight. But he does send his congratulations to all of the students. And finally, I want to thank our trustees. Their work is rarely acknowledged, and if you've ever been a trustee of anything, then you will know that it's not always the kind of amazing cutting edge mission that our students are involved in, but it is nevertheless vital to the success of the college and its work. And so we're grateful to all of our trustees and particularly to Mark and Karen, our chair and treasurer, on whom a lot of the burden falls. Thank you. And we also take the opportunity to thank those who've stood down from this role in the year, Tom Bourne and Nick Bradshaw and Sue Phillips. Together, their years of service date back to before the college was founded, um, just about, um, but they have contributed so much over those years and made a real and practical difference to the ministries of individuals and churches across South Wales and beyond. So thank you very much as well for all you have done. May God in his mercy continue to bless the South Wales Baptist College and all who sail in her. It is now um, my great um, pleasure to um, to announce the, the, the college prizes uh, that we have uh, to award this year. This is something there are a number of uh, historical prizes that have been given to award particular areas of achievement in uh, the life of, of the college. And uh, there are, as Ed has already said, so many things for us to celebrate uh, in the life of the students of our college. So many great gifts, so many great things that we affirm and celebrate. And really, we would love to give prizes to every student. Um, there is something wonderful and distinctive and rich that every one of them has brought to the college life and will bring and or is already bringing to the ministry of God's church. But as I say, we have these uh, um, primarily academic um, prizes which are um, uh, which which we have the opportunity to award uh, each year um, so I'm going to uh, announce uh, who those are are going to um, and as you can imagine when staff discussed this uh, there were lots of names and lots of people um, in the frame uh, for these but the, these are the ones whose particular work in these areas we want to affirm and celebrate and uh, give thanks for and um, you should know uh, a small check will be in the post, um, as they say. And I will present these uh, prizes with a, a virtual handshake, um, so um, I can't spotlight everyone. Um, but if you can, uh, you know, if you're receiving a prize, you can give your virtual virtual handshake. So, uh, first of all, the J. Ethel Jones uh, Prize for Pastoral Studies. In reverse order, no, I'm not going to do that. Um, the J. Arthur Jones uh, Prize for Pastoral Studies uh, goes to Misha Pedersen. Congratulations, Misha. The uh, J. Mansell John Prize for Academic Studies goes to Sarah Elson. The 
the W.B. Thomas Prize for Pastoral Studies goes to Deb Stammers. The uh, Thomas Phillips Prize for Christian Doctrine goes to Laura Watkins. And the first year, uh, the, the Anne Rendell um, Barnabas uh, Prize uh, for First Year Achievement goes to Mervyn Rigg. And now I hand over to uh, John Davis, who is going to present uh, the Pathways uh, Prize. Thank you, Stephen. And another part of the college life is the Pathways course. Uh, the Pathways course is something that is taught monthly at the college, uh, although recently it's online. Uh, and this course enables people to deepen their understanding of faith and practice and to develop skills uh, in ministry and mission. It's uh, wonderful that in our, through the last few years of the Pathways course, some of the students, including uh, Misha and Merv, who just accepted awards, have, have spent time in the Pathways course and, and gone on uh, to study their diploma. And it's wonderful to see them thriving in that environment. Um, but it's also wonderful to continue to see uh, students from a range of um, contexts, uh, working maybe the some as, as lay pastors uh, towards sort of nationally, national recognition, others uh, just seeking to get some extra experience, some working uh, as, as part of a local leadership team or in youth work or le leading worship or small groups and wanting to come together and, and to learn and to study more. And it's a wonderful uh, experience and to see everyone learning from each other as well and we have a, an award for the pathways course as well uh, and this is hard uh, to choose uh, one person from 16 uh, who are currently on the course uh, but this year's pathways award goes to someone who has been on the course for about a year now uh, someone who brings fantastic contributions to every discussion someone who brings the best out of those around him and someone who thinks deeply and writes beautifully uh, and so our Pathways Award this year goes to Lisa Isaac. Well done everyone and congratulations. Everyone has worked hard and we would love to have given a prize to everyone because in these difficult circumstances, people have worked exceptionally well uh, under difficult days. And one of the things that we have uh, reflected on in the college is how God has continued to always provide what has been needed for us. We've heard stories of that already from students and we could testify to that over and over again. And one of the songs that has reflected that in our worship has been a song from the Northumbria community, which is called Expressions of Faith. Lord, you have always given bread for the coming day. And though I am poor today, I will believe are the words that begin the song. And we're going to hear this song sung as we uh, respond to God and uh, bring our offerings to God. And this is an opportunity. Uh, we don't have a, a plate that we can pass around, but we do have uh, a link to an online crowdfunder uh, that uh, Steve Locke, who you saw earlier, and his wife, Helen, have been involved uh, with the Gulu Mission Initiative in Northern Uganda. And they've been working with them for a long time and the uh, impact of COVID-19 has been uh, much more devastating there in, in, in more uh, needy communities than perhaps even here. And so there is a crowdfunder link there. Uh, if you need to go and scribble it down with a piece of paper instead of, and a pen, instead of clicking on the link, by all means do that. But we're going to uh, listen to this song that reminds us that God provides us for all that we need. And as we do that, you may wish to consider uh, contributing to this crowdfunder. It's only open for another week or so more, so this is the last few days to, to contribute. And then after that, one of those prize-winning students, Deb, is going to come and lead us in our prayer of thanks. Oh, Dad. Diolch am bob dim ti wedi roed inni. Diolch am y gwaith yn Uganda. A dan i'n gweddi o dros y prosiect yna. Neid i defnyddio press yna i dy gogoniant di. 
Oh, Father, thank you for everything that you've given us. Thank you for the work in Uganda, and we pray for the project there. Please use this money for your glory. And Enu Yesi. Amen. I hope you're getting some feeling of what an amazing uh, learning and formation community the college is. It's such a privilege for me to work there as uh, co-principal along Ed and an amazing team of staff as well with uh, Craig and Stephen, we make a great team. But we also have amazing students and it's just so sad that tonight we have to say goodbye to four of them. We're going to miss you so much, John and Tim and Deb and Emir. But before you go, here is a chance for you to just share with us a little bit about your favourite Bible verse. Genesis 1, 27. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. This hasn't always been my favourite verse, but right now I don't know if there's a more important verse for the church. To remember that we need to be a voice for the voiceless. To continue to shine a light in the darkness. And to stand up to the powers that be and to bring an end to systematic racism in our country and globally. Choosing a verse wasn't too difficult, and it goes back to when I first started Sunday school. At the end of every session, we would all recite a verse and every now and again learn a new one. Now, my first verse, as it was for many others, I think, was only three words. Deo cariad eu. God is love. It wasn't until I went back to look for the verse uh, many years later did I realise that it was only part of the verse. 1 John chapter 4 verse 8. Yn yw an penod pedwar ad nod oeth. Yr hwn ne diw yn cari, nid ar nabi diw, o bregid diw, cari a diw. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. It's the verse that's carried me until now and hopefully will carry me throughout my ministry. God is love. Deu cariad eu. The Bible passage I've chosen is Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. I had to learn the whole psalm when I was a child for a girls brigade competition and God has really used it throughout my life. It's something that stuck with me and my mum did a wonderful tapestry for me with verses from this psalm. So it's always been really special to me. I have many favourite verses, uh, but there's one in particular which my friend Harry wrote on a piece of wood for me and because uh, I never want to forget it. So it hangs on the wall in my office. And it's this, Romans 15, verses 15 to 16. Because of the grace that God gave me to be a minister of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles, with a priestly duty of proclaiming the gospel of God, so that the Gentiles might become an offering acceptable to God and sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Bless you, friends. One of the things that we would normally have done with valedicting students uh, would be to gather around them, to lay hands on them, to be a lot closer than two meters to them and to pray God's blessing to them. And we knew from a long time ago that this wasn't going to be possible uh, this evening. So what we did a few weeks ago is we sent everyone uh, a, a card, everyone who is a, a leaving student, but everyone, every student in the college, uh, should have received a card and we wrote on the card not to open it before the valedictory um, so uh, i'm going to invite you now to open the cards and some of you can see them there and um, being opened up um, and this was our little blessing to you when we can't be close to you uh, physically to still know that god's blessing will will rest upon you um, the the verses that we have 
tried to live through this year as a college community have been to love the Lord our God with all our heart and mind and soul and strength. And this is, I'm not sure whether you can see this, it's one of the cards that uh, we had sent to various people. And inside the card, there is a blessing. And this is the blessing that we would love to share with you. John's going to do the same for the Pathway students in just a moment. But let's join together as we say these, I'm going to say these words of blessing over each of the students and they have the card with the same blessing in it. Uh, and in times of trouble, uh, in difficult moments in ministry, maybe you will go back to this card and know that God is walking with you. So let's pray God's blessing on our students. Holy Trinity of love, encircle these our students now. Keep your heart close and their fears afar. Keep your strength within and all vanity without. Keep your mind close and any folly afar. Keep your spirit within and all distractions without. Eternal Trinity of love, encircle these folk this day, now and forevermore. Amen. And to all those who are on the Pathways course, we wanted to bless and encourage you as well and to pray for you. Um, and so you have hopefully also got your cards. And if you haven't already opened them, then now is the time for you to open them too. Um, in your homes, in your small groups, your churches, communities, you guys are bringers of good news. You are proclaimers of salvation. And so as you open up the cards uh, and verse, that um, to encourage each one of you is from Isaiah 52, verse 7, how beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. And we pray for you that God will bless you as you continue to learn and study, and especially as you continue to serve in your local contexts. And a very simple prayer over you all this evening. May the majesty of the Father be the light by which you walk. May the compassion of the Son be the love by which you walk. May the presence of the Holy Spirit be the power by which, by which you walk. As we pray for you, we pray God's blessing on you, on your churches and your families. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Craig and John. So as Craig says, at this point, we would normally have been gathered around the students. We would be laying our hands on them. We would be praying for them. And so students, even though we can't actually lay hands on you now, uh, John and Tim and Deb and Emma, we're going to pray for you now. I'm going to pray for you first and I'm going to pray for you in Welsh. And then Mark Thomas, who's our chair of trustees, he is going to pray for you in English. And I just want you to know how much we love you and how much we're going to miss you. And here is our prayer for you tonight. Dio dad, ar gloed iesi, ysbryd glân. Rydyn ni'n diolch ti am y gymuned sydd ar galon dy ddiwdod. Ar cariad sy'n llifo honot i'r byd i gyd. Roedd ti'n ein dysgu ni sut i fyw mewn cariad gyda'n gilydd. Sut i gari ein cymydog fel yn hunan. Diolch hwn i ti heno am gymuned y coleg, am bopeth rydym wedi ei dysgu eleni, am y miliynau o eriau sydd wedi cael eu dweud, am bob traethawd sydd wedi cael eu ysgrifennu, pob arholiad sydd wedi cael eu sefyll, am yr holl addysg, Diwynyddol ac ysbrydol. Am y ffordd ein bod ni wedi dysgu oedd wrth ein gilydd, wrth rhan i gwasanaethau a phrofiadau bach a mawr. Ond gweddion yn arbennig heno, dros y pedwar myfariwr sy'n gorffen eu hystudiaethau a'u hyfforddiant gyda ni yn y coleg. O dad, dyn ni'n gwybod taw nid diwedd ydy heno erin nhw. Ond yn hydra cam arall ar y daith gyfrwys o, di, o ddil yn dy fab iesu a thysbryd glân. Gweddiwn dros Deb, 
a John, a Tim, a Emir. Bid Gadanu, or did you know Gumbrid a Cam Nessa, Gadagloisi Nawir, nay, Mount Pertanus Wahanol, Gadarin Eglois. Bendithianu, help anu with Gary, Gadai Hoth Galon, I Hoth Nerth, I Hoth Enaid, I Hoth Vedo. Roi the Nur Nerth, Gary Kamadog Vele Hinan. Cadunun Fedlon Ravengo, Am Vifinu Rag Drug. Bendithia a Talioid, a Kamenedai a Hegloisi. Ermoin be poor bag with or bewid I knew, and Roy Testiolaith, a Gogoniant E.T. Govanun hen and Enu Yesi Grist, the Vab and Guaredur. Amen. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father. We declare how wonderful are the works of your hands and we're particularly thankful for John and Tim, Deb and Emir and for all that they have brought and contributed to the life of the college during their time with us and for all that they that you have enabled them to accomplish during their time at college. We have marked, acknowledged and celebrated your preparing and equipping of them for their ongoing work. Now we ask for your blessing on them. We ask that you would keep their footsteps firm and remind them that you are with them always. Allow every gift and treasure that you have placed inside their lives to grow, develop and flourish to bring you glory. We ask that you would enable them to know the empowering freshness of your spirit over their lives in amazing ways. May they know your spirit's context specific equipping for wherever they are, wherever you lead them, wherever their future is. Be a lamp to their feet and a light to their path. Shine over them and bless them with your favour and peace. May he guide you and bless you, use you and keep you, and the living Lord Jesus be glorified through you, that others would come to know him through you, and others would grow in their knowledge and understanding wisdom and love of him who loved us first, Christ our Lord. Amen. So tonight's reading is from Acts chapter 8, and we're going to start at verse 26 and go down through to 40. Acts chapter 8, 26 to 40. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, go south to the road, the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way, he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of the treasury of Candace, the, the queen of Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home, he was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you're reading? Philip asked. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. The eunuch was reading this passage of scripture. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter. As a lamb before his shearer is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? for his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me please, who is this prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, look, here is water. Why shouldn't I be baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Philip, however, appeared as Astos and travelled about, preaching the gospel in all the towns until he reached Caesarea. Amen. Thank you for the invitation to speak at your valedictory service. I've been mulling over what I should talk about. 
and I have to say it was hard to choose. 16 years ago, I was in the position that you leaving students are in now. And I recall being aghast to find that as a newly accredited minister, I was still expected to write essays for another three years. But I have found that lifelong learning is one of the many joys I have experienced in the roles that I have had since that day. Which is one reason why I want to share something that I discovered last year about a passage I was quite familiar with. I came across this quote by Kafka, cited by Eugene Peterson. If the book you are reading from does not wake you, as with a fist hammering on your skull, why then do you read it? A book must be like an ice axe breaking the frozen sea within us. Now, most likely Kafka is not talking about the Bible, but I am. And I also came across last year a concept called dislocated exegesis, which really interested me. You know, of course, that exegesis means exposition, the unpacking of scripture. Dislocated exegesis is about engaging with scripture in unexpected places, in places that might unsettle the reading you're likely to bring to the text. For instance, the woman who wrote about dislocated exegesis decided to experiment by reading the Bible once a week in unusual places. And one day when she was feeling really hungry, not having eaten since the previous evening. Um, some people would not call that really hungry, but never mind. She sat in a bakery cafe and she read John chapter 6. That passage where Jesus says, I am the bread of life. And she realised that she'd never read this passage while eating before, far less when she's really desperate for some food. And she wrote this, I ate ravenously, I was relieved to chew, to swallow, and then, then I read about the bread of life. And for a moment in that bakery, she said, I understood how famished I was, how hollowed out hungry I was to feed on Jesus. For a few intensely felt seconds, I heard a rumour of reality, how deep the hunger, how nourishing the food. And even as I read her words, I felt their impact. It woke me up. It broke up some of the frozen sea, the icicles around me. Later, I read about the person we know only as the Ethiopian eunuch, whom we meet in Acts 18, as he travels down the wilderness road from Jerusalem to Gaza, having been in the Jewish capital city for some particular reason. As a castrated person, not only is he condemned to a life of celibacy, but within the Jewish religion, he is also regarded as impure. Much like that woman who was afflicted with a disorder, which meant she was continually menstruating. Forever an, ups an outsider, never able to take part in Jewish worship. However, we also know of him that he is a person of power, because he is the chief finance minister in the court of Queen Candace. She is a ruler in Ethiopia in place of her son. He is the sun god and as such he is considered too holy for menial tasks such as ruling the kingdom. So Queen Candace's eunuch is somewhat surprisingly reading from the Hebrew holy scriptures. Reading from a scroll. Scrolls were rare. In a village like Nazareth, for instance, 
they would probably only have been a few sacred scrolls kept in the local synagogue. So this man was wealthy and he was searching. And on this wilderness road, far from anyone and anywhere, God's Spirit arranges a meeting for him so that he can have help in understanding what he is so engrossed in. He is reading from what we now know as the 53rd chapter of Isaiah, Isaiah the prophet. Of course, we know at that time there were no chapter breaks or headings in what they read. So he meets Philip and the eunuch reads to him. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb, silent before its shearer, so he does not open its, his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. Dislocated exegesis. An unexpected reading of the text in an unexpected place. If you were this man in his position, castrated for another's expediency, in his chariot, on the wilderness road between Jerusalem and Gaza, having possibly been attracted enough to the Jewish way of life that you purchase a Jewish holy manuscript, if you were this man reading these words, what would they say to you? What would you notice and how might you respond? Remember the words, like a sheep he was led to the slaughter and like a lamb silent before its shearer so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. Now, as 21st century Christians, we jump ahead of ourselves and we think, well, of course, these words are about Jesus, the crucified. He was the sheep led to the slaughter. The Ethiopian treasurer responding to these words asks Philip an exegetical question. About whom is the prophet talking? Himself or someone else? It seems to me as if the words the Ethiopian had been reading had been like fireworks going off in his head. And no doubt Philip then tries to explain to his companion that the servant whom Isaiah talks about has in fact come. A servant who would rescue Israel and the world, who would free them from exile and bless them and bless the whole world, including outsiders and foreigners. And this new way of being is now already starting. This is amazing news for the eunuch. But there is more. And it's the more that I think changed the Ethiopian eunuch's life around and turns this narrative around for me. For I believe that whether it was himself or Philip, but they read further on into Isaiah and found just a little bit further down the scroll words that I think would have been like an ice axe breaking a frozen sea. Listen to these words from Isaiah 56, 3 to 5. Do not say, do not let the foreigner joined to the Lord say, the Lord will surely separate me from his people. And do not let the eunuch say, I am just a dry tree. For thus says the Lord, to the eunuchs who keep my Sabbaths, who choose the things that please me and hold fast my covenant, I will give in my house and within my walls a monument and a name better than sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. 
About whom does the prophet write? The Ethiopian asks. About Jesus? Yes. To whom does he say this? He says it to you. This is said to you. Why have I chosen to talk about this to you today? I've chosen it because it excites me. It brings me to tears. It is food for me. It reminds me forcibly of the God who is our Lord, who meets us in unexpected places, who meets with unexpected people, whose words are sharp and sweet and powerful and touch people in the deepest of places. And it excites me because it reminds me that God is alive here with us. And as some of you leave this place for the next part of your journey, you need to know this deep down. God is alive here with us, with you. This is said to you. May God's blessing rest upon you. Amen. God's blessing rest upon you. Indeed, one of the things we have discovered as we have been praying in the college daily is new ways of how we pray. And one of the things that we have done is that we have brought our prayers uh, together all at the same time into the chat. And then uh, and we have typed our prayers into the chat room as we have listened to some music uh, to help us in our thoughts and prayers. And we're going to invite you to do the same thing. And I will try and bring those things together. So as we listen to music from the Teze community, Lord, hear my prayer and invite you to just bring any thoughts and prayers of places and people that are on your heart and place them in the, in the chat and then we will bring them together in a prayer at the end. So let us pray. Lord, we bring to you those things that weigh on our hearts and in our spirit, those people and places for whom we have concern this evening. And we ask, Lord, that you will bless them that you will encourage them, that you will strengthen them, that you will free them of all that harms them and restore to them the joy of their salvation. We pray particularly, Lord, for our leaving students and ask that you would bless them. We pray for those who are this evening thinking of lost ones, people who have died in this past while, perhaps from coronavirus, perhaps in road accidents and in other places where people over this time have lost loved ones. We pray, Lord, that you will strengthen them in their grief at this difficult time. And we pray, Lord, that as we send students out into ministry, that you will continue to call women and men from across Wales and beyond into ministry of all kinds of ways in unexpected places and to unexpected times. We pray for people, particularly as we have tonight for um, the, the uh, school with Steve uh, and Helen Locke. But we also pray for the African continent as it battles COVID-19, along with the ravages of drought and war and famine. We pray, Lord, for each person here each person gathered in from wherever they are sheltering tonight, that you would bless them with your presence and that they would know not just that they have been to an online gathering, but that they have been touched by the real presence of God who comes with us and walks with us in the days ahead. Amen. Everyone has been wondering when we will meet again, when we will be able to physically gather in one place. And we hope that that will be soon and that we will be able to do so uh, safely and responsibly. So we've reached that point almost, which I know has kept you all here for so long. The promise that I gave you with the start of students singing together the great uh, Welsh hymn of faith, the Megariad, Here is Love. But before we sing that, there is just a chance to hear some other students giving us their own blessing from Scripture.
Dymer un deg yn disgybl yn mynd i Galilea. To the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Wedyn, dyma Iesu yn mynd at unrhyw ac yn dweud. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Felly, ewch i'w wneud pobl o bob gwlad yn ddisgyblion i mi. Baptising them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. A dysgwch nhw i wneud pob peth dwi wedi ddeud wrth o chi. And surely I am with you always. To the very end of the age.
So we come to the end of our service. And I'm going to invite you in the, uh, the privacy of your muted inhabitations to join us in the grace. And I'm going to lead us just in a short prayer and then uh, you can join with us in your final words as we share the grace together. Let us go now watching over one another and walking together with God, committing all that we have and all that we are to God's unfolding purposes of love. So may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, of the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and evermore. Amen. <laughs>